As I headed north from Defuniac Springs, Florida on Highway 83, I learned from the locals uh, about a green cemetery run by a couple of brothers. I was told to look for the atomic bomb missile heads flanking the front entrance. Missile heads? At a cemetery? Ser seriously? Okay, so I kept my eyes peeled, and there they were. As I turned to the driveway, I took a big step back in time. Hi there. Hello. You John Wilkerson? Yes. Mike Cotton, nice to meet you. Same, Mike. Talking to some folks in town, they said you've got a green cemetery out here. It's, uh, it's about the natural way of burying people. It's an alternative to the, what we call a traditional burial these days. Uh, this is really the traditional way that was done up till the Civil War when embalming got invented. The place was really a journey back in time. From the old sawmill to the artist studio where John crafted his own metal creations, it was a simpler way of life. Their family had owned the land since 1946, and it was turned into a natural green cemetery five years ago. They were only the second green cemetery in America. John, the natural way seems like it'd be a lot less harmful for the environment. Oh yes, of course. There's about every year in the United States, 90, thousand tons of steel buried in cemeteries. I mean, 100 million tons of concrete. It's unbelievable. Thou, hundred thousand, several hundred thousand gallons of embalming fluid. It's, it's uh, unbelievable that we bury so much stuff in the ground and pretend it's sacred forevermore. So our way requires virtually none of that stuff. We, we don't allow embalming fluid. We don't allow caskets unless they're biodegradable and we encourage people to just use a blanket. That makes sense. It seems like it'd be less impact on the water system that's underground. Yes. Uh, embalming fluid turns in is mostly formaldehyde, and it eventually turns into some other hide with about that many letters, which is in fact carcinogenic, and it eventually makes its way into your drinking water. A human body by itself biodegrades and returns to nature and becomes part of the trees, is our, is our theory. So you can do this, this is absolutely legal what you're doing. Yes, the state, we have a license from the state of Florida, but we've been taught by the funeral industry and now it's a giant shareholder controlled corporations mostly running the industry. And their goal is simply to take more money from you and sell you more stuff and bury more concrete and steel in the ground. It's not about money, Mike. It's about doing the natural thing and preserving this piece of property into perpetuity mostly by virtue of getting more bodies buried here so the politicians and the uh, real estate folks can't ever, can never break it up into little pieces. And our motto is, we want your body. We don't mean to rush you. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the Casket Lazy Boy Showcase. We can uh, watch a tree grow. We can turn it into lumber here at this little antique sawmill. We can turn the lumber into a casket. and or We moved to the old sawmill that looked like it came right out of the 1890s. It also doubled as their showroom for some very unique caskets that served a double purpose. And this, Mike, is the Casket Lazy Boy Showcase right here. We can uh, send you home with one of these boxes. It's got shelves in it. You put your clothes on these shelves. And when the time comes, somebody takes the clothes out, puts them in a garbage bag, takes them down to Karen and Sharon, where you can buy shirts for $1 in the Funiac Springs. Take the shells out, they're just sitting there, roll you over in it, bring you back to the Glendale Nature Preserve where you can be planted right near where this tree grew. Wow, John, this is all just totally natural. Yeah, it's full circle. We, we grow the trees, I'm gonna watch the trees grow. We turn them into lumber here, turn the lumber into a casket, and eventually the casket comes back and gets planted right near where that tree grew that, that it came from. What an ecological coup, huh? Nothing goes to waste. No, nothing goes to waste. We use the sawdust. We use the planar shavings. So John, where is the actual cemetery and can we look at it? Sure, it's about a mile from here. We'll take the rust to bus, partially water powered. Come on. All right. Wow, John, I, I tell you, I've never been in a bus that's got tractor tires on it. This is the rust to bus. We dug it out of the bushes and resurrected it. And I have to admit it was very quiet and peaceful. The preserve was over 350 acres of pines, hardwoods, wetlands, including an open-air chapel. All you needed for a natural memorial service. It was very comforting to learn about this natural alternative to what is essentially the last natural event of our lives. 
Okay, Mike, this is the All Faith Chapel. You can have funeral services, wedding services, divorce services, class reunions. Uh, the cemetery itself is right here. We built it in this little sandy knoll so that you can dig graves 365 days out of the year and have them not fill up full of water. Mike, this is my friend Larry here. We put him here about two or three years ago, I'm not sure. We take a plastic mesh, like they put on top of the dump trucks, we put one here and one there. We put the topsoil on one mesh. We can actually drag it back out of the way. It's not all that heavy. We dig the grave with a little farm tractor with a three-point hitch backhoe. We try to put the topsoil back on top, and that, that eventually this will go flat again. This particular burial was done by Larry's friend who went and got the paperwork from the health department, uh, built him a really nice pine box. Larry died at home under hospice care. They put Larry in the box, called us, we dug a grave, brought him over here, put him in the ground. Uh, it was all 100% do-it-yourself burial, which you can do in the state of Florida. You know, John, we've been told for years that you've got to spend all this money on a funeral. You've got to buy a coffin. You've got to buy a vault. I mean, this is way different. We've been tricked by the $28 billion a year funeral industry to think that we have to do all that. Now, some people like to do it, but you don't have to. We have options. But it has become my passion to educate people. You have this option. It's here. You, can, you, can, you don't have to spend a fortune to die in the United States. So John, what about safety issues? Uh, I mean, isn't that a problem? No. There's nothing, that, no infectious or contagious disease that can live in a human body more than a few minutes, maybe an hour or two after death, except tuberculosis. There are some others, but they don't exist in this part of the world. Other than that, there is not an issue. We're simply a piece of dead meat once our spirit leaves it, that's my belief, that is going to rot. You can embalm it and stall that process for two or three days for the viewing, or you can let nature take its course. John, you guys are the second green cemetery in America. So how can people find out more information about you? GlendaleNaturePreserve.org is our website name. If you put Green Barrel into Google, we'll be on the first page almost every time. Well, thanks, John. This has really opened my mind to a great natural alternative. My pleasure, Mike. Take a look around. We've got plenty of space. Think about picking a spot. We'd, we'd love to have you back someday. No reservation required. <laughs> well, hopefully not too soon. Hopefully. <laughs> As I headed out, it was great to see this family operation offering a burial alternative from what the big corporations want you to buy into. It was good to know we have a choice and that the natural way was safe, affordable, and the right way to go. Glendale Memorial offered an environmentally sound burial option and for the enlightened, a final destination beyond the interstate.